Congressman Paul, you're known as the absolutist uh, in, in the bunch, um, someone who has consistently opposed uh, federal government from having uh, any role, uh, and I think by your definition that isn't explicitly laid out in the Constitution. Uh, so uh, this makes people curious. Is there a line with you? Where do you draw it? Does this include things like uh, uh, making cars safe, making medicine safe, air traffic control, controlling the jets above our heads? Well, I think in theory, if you understood the free market and a free society, you don't need government to do that. And we live in a society where we have been adapted to this, and you can't just drop it all at once, but you can transition away from it. On regulations, no, I don't believe in any of these federal regulations, but that, that doesn't mean I don't believe in regulations. The regulation of the marketplace takes care of it. Just think if we had the regulations on the market that dealt with the bankruptcies, that had to go bankrupt. We wouldn't have been able to bail out the big banks and the big corporations and dump on the poor people. Well, so the market would dictate it. You can't commit fraud. If you need d detailed regulations, you can do it at the state level. But the federal government is not authorized to nitpick every little transaction. The way they use the interstate commerce clause is outrageous as far as I'm concerned. Well, 30 seconds more for devil's advocate here, because uh, would you then uh, put it on the drug companies to say, no, we're bringing this to market. Trust us. Uh, it's a fair fantastic drug. All the pilots in the sky to add to their responsibilities uh, their own air traffic control in an organic way. Well, I, I, what I said is theoretically you could, it could be privatized, but who ends up doing the regulations on the drugs? They do as much harm as good. They don't take good care of us. Who gets, who gets to write the regulations? The bureaucrats write the regulations, but who writes the laws? The lobbyists have control, so the lobbyists from the drug industry has control of writing the regulations so you turn it over to the bureaucracy but you would have private institutions that could become credible and and I mean do we need the federal government to tell us whether we buy a safe car I say the consumers of America are smart enough to decide what kind of car they can buy and whether it's safe or not and they don't need right. federal government hounding them and putting so much regulations on that our car industry has gone overseas congressman thank you congressman Paul another question from a Politico reader do you advocate getting rid of the minimum wage? Would that create more jobs? Absolutely, and it would help the, the poor, the people who need, it, need a job. The minimum wage is a mandate. We're against mandates, so why should we have it? No, it would be very beneficial. But I was trying to get your attention a little while ago. There's eight of us up here. I'm a physician, but you sure weren't going to ask me any medical questions. But I would like to address that just a little bit. First off, uh, you, you know, the governor uh, of Texas criticized the governor of, uh, of Massachusetts for Romney care. But he wrote a really fancy letter supporting Hillary Care. So we probably ought to ask him about that. But mandates. That's what the whole society is about. That's what we do all the time. That's what government does. Mandate, mandate, mandate. And what we, we talk so much about the Obama mandate, which is very important. But what about Medicare? Isn't that a mandate? Everything we do is a mandate. So this is why you have to look at this at the cause of liberty. We don't need the government running our lives. And, and I do want to address the subject of $2 uh, oil uh, or gasoline because uh, I can do much better than that. I can get you a gallon of gasoline time. for a dime. Time. Thank you, Congressman. Well, now i got to finish the sentence. You didn't give me <laughs> that time <laughs> before. <laughs> I can These get are you. rules that all of you agree to that Brian and I will try Let's hear that. Yeah. Finish the sentence or you're all done. Okay, I'm going to finish the sentence Quickly, then. Please. Okay, you can buy a gallon of gasoline today for a silver dime. A silver dime is worth $3.50. It's all about inflation and Good. too Thank many you, regulations. Sir. Now, Governor Perry, I saw you nod your head. Done. I saw you nod your head, Governor Perry, uh, at the answer on the minimum wage that would create jobs. Do you agree with that? I actually was nodding my head when he said that I wrote a letter to Hillary and we were hoping okay, that she would be able to uh, come up with something that would not leave the agriculture agricultural men and women because I was the agriculture commissioner at that particular point in time. We had no idea it was going to be the monstrosity that's known as Hillary Care. Speaking of letters, uh, I was more interested in the one that you wrote to Ronald Reagan back and said, I'm going to quit the party because of the things you believe in. Oh, I need an answer on that. It had... <laughs> You've got a 30-second no, rebuttal. Your time.
I strongly supported Ronald Reagan. I was one of four in Texas, and one, of, one of the four members of Congress that supported Reagan in 76. And uh, I supported him all along. And I supported his, his, uh, all his issues and all his uh, programs. But in the 1980s, we spent too much, we taxed too much, we built up our deficits, and it was a bad scene. For, therefore, I support the message of Ronald Reagan. The message was great, but the consequence, we have to be honest with ourselves, it was not all that great. Huge deficits during the 1980s, and that is what my criticism was for. Not for Ronald Reagan's message. His message is a great message. We've been talking just now about Governor Perry's rhetoric, but let's talk about his record. Just this morning, your campaign put out a statement accusing him of pushing for bailout money, supporting welfare for illegal immigrants, and trying to forcibly vaccinate 12-year-old girls against sexually transmitted disease. He's your home state governor. Is he less conservative than meets the eye? Much, much more so, yes. Uh, just take the um, HPV. Uh, forcing 12-year-old girls to take an inoculation uh, to prevent this sexually transmitted disease. This is not good medicine, I, I do not believe. I think it's social, uh, social misfit, and not, it's, it's not good social policy. And therefore, I think this is, is, is very bad uh, to do this. But uh, the, one of the worst parts about that was the way it was done. You know, the governorship in Texas is traditionally supposed to be a weak governorship. I didn't even know they could pass laws by writing an executive order. He did it with an executive order, passed it. The, the state was furious, and this, the uh, legislature overwhelmingly, probably 90 percent, I don't know exactly, overwhelmingly re repealed this. But I think it's the way it was passed, which was so bad, I think it's a bad piece of legislation, but I don't like the idea of, of executive orders. I, as president, will not use the executive Hi. orders to write laws. You, Congressman. Congressman Paul, uh, this same law do you want to abolish the TSA, what would exist in its place? Well, the uh, airlines are responsible for carrying their cargo and their passengers. I mean, why, why should we assume that a bureaucracy can do better? And look at the monstrosity we have at the airports. These TSA agents are abusive there. Sometimes uh, they're accused of all kinds of sexual activities on the way they maul people at the airport. So the airlines I'll could do that. I'll give you your best at LAX tonight. <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, uh, I, would, I would think the airlines should treat passengers as well as a, uh, a a company that hauls money around, uh, and they they protect their money. They have private guards, and and, and they could do it. Be just remember, 9/11 came about because there was too much government. Government was more or less in charge. They told the pilots they couldn't have guns, and they were told never to resist. They set up the stage for all this. So no, private private markets do a good job in protecting much better than this bureaucracy called the TSA. Let well, me tell you. Let me ask you about something else. It's it's um, related in. In a way has to do with mother nature uh, before the broadcast uh, senator santorum's got flooding today in pennsylvania governor perry is just back from the wildfires out east category one storm laid waste to entire areas there's standing water tonight patterson new jersey uh, 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 many of the towns uh, uh, w around where i live eight days without power we had people eating in outdoor and public parks because the supermarkets were closed down the question is federal aid something like fema uh, if you object to what it's become and how's it's run, uh, your position is to, is to remove it, take it away, abolish it. What happens in its absence? Well, what happened before 1979, we didn't have FEMA, and that FEMA just conditioned people to build where they shouldn't be building. We lose the market effect of that. But yeah, my position is we should have never had it. There's a much better way of doing it. I mean, this whole idea that the federal government can deal with weather and anything in the world, just go to the federal government. They're, FEMA's broke. They're $20 billion in debt. But I'm not for saying tomorrow, close it down. A lot of people pay the insurance. I work real hard to make it work, and I did that in my district, too. But I'll tell you how we should do it. We're spending, believe it or not, this blew my mind when I read it, it's $20 billion a year for air conditioning in the, 
Afghanistan and Iraq in the tents over there and all the air conditioning. Cut that $20 billion out, bring it home, take 10 off the debt and put 10 into FEMA or whoever else needs it, child health care or whatever. But I'll tell you what, if we did that and took the air conditioning out of the green zone, our troops would come home and that would make me happy. <laughs> what specifically in your mind would make the border secure? Congressman. Your thoughts? Um, obviously, it's a very big problem. I think we need to remove the incentive, easy road to citizenship. Nobody has mentioned the fact that they they qualify for uh, uh, benefits as well. You know, the welfare benefits that we shouldn't have to give. The state of Texas shouldn't be forced to provide free health care and free uh, free education. But there there is a mess down there. It's a big mess, and it's it's the drug war that's going on there. And our drug laws are driving this. So now we're killing thousands and thousands of people. That makes it much more complicated but people who want big fences and guns sure we could secure the borders a barbed wire fence with machine guns that would do the trick i don't believe that's what america is all about i just really don't we can enforce our law if we had a healthy economy this wouldn't be such a bad deal people are worrying about jobs but every time you think about this toughness on the border and id cards and real ideas think that it's a it's a penalty against the american people too i think this fence business is designed and may well be used against us and keep us in. In economic turmoil, the people want to leave with their capital, and there's capital controls and there's people control. So every time you think of a fence keeping all those bad people out, think about those fences maybe being used against us, keeping us in. A long time ago, a fellow Texan of yours, a young student teacher in Catula, Texas, was horrified to see young kids coming into the classroom uh, hungry, some of them with distended uh, bellies because of hunger. He made a vow that if he ever had anything to do about it, the government would provide meals, uh, hot meals at best, in schools. Uh, the young student teacher, of course, was uh, later went on to be President Lyndon Johnson. Do you think that is any more, providing nutrition at schools for children, a role of the federal government? Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure when he did that, he did it with local government, and there's no rules against that. That'd be fine. So uh, <clears throat> that doesn't imply that you want to endorse the entire welfare state. You imply endorse all welfare. Anytime I challenge it, you're going to uh, challenge the whole welfare system. No, it isn't authorized in the Constitution for us to run the welfare state, and it doesn't work. All it's filled up is with mandates, and the mandates are what we're objecting to. I want to repeal all the mandates, but yes, if there are poor people in Texas, we have a responsibility. I'd like to see it voluntary as possible. But, the, but under our Constitution, our states have that right. If they feel the obligation, they have a perfect right to. So uh, don't always try to turn around and say that we who believe in liberty, we lack compassion. Because we who believe in liberty and understand the market, we're the only ones that really understand how people are taken care of, how they are fed, and how people have jobs. It's the market. <laughs> it's never the government that does it. So this whole idea that there's something wrong with people who don't lavish out free stuff from the federal government somehow aren't compassionate enough. I resist those accusations. Congressman, thank you. Um